Welcome, I'm Jack Clegg from the School of Continuing Studies at Northwestern University. And today we're going to be talking to Russ Riendo, senior partner with East Wing Search Group in Barrington, Illinois. Russ is going to be teaching a new course in leadership for us this coming fall, but today we're going to be talking about key issues in the world of work regarding career change. So Russ, is there a secret to making career change into a new field in this recession? Boy, career change, what a, uh, what a hot topic in today's marketplace. And I, I, I think the best way to address that is a couple ways. One is there are some secrets to making career changes in a recession, but we have to think about it a couple ways. One is timing, one is research, another one is speaking the language, and another part of that is networking. And a big challenge in when you have a tough economy, when you're making a career change, what's important is are you speaking the language of that industry? Do you know what the language is, the culture, the nomenclature, the terminology that's part of that? And many times when you're changing fields in a recession, you've got competition from people already there, and now you're trying to get into their tribe. And it can be very, very difficult. So you've got to be even a better researcher and preparation for that. So timing is good. Doing, doing effective research is very important for you in terms of learning the industry, what new trends there are and making sure you understand that as you move forward. Another important part, I think, Jack, is, is networking with people that you know from that industry. Because it's important, the, the best way to get into an industry is someone who was already in the industry that has had experience bringing in someone from outside the tribe into their tribe. And it's important to connect with those people because they can give you the ins and outs. So I, I think those are some, some critical things that you and I uh, we'll see. We <laughs> also have those social networks out there like MySpace, Facebook, LinkedIn. Yeah. Are they helping or, or hurting what we're doing in, in the job career search? I, I think they're doing both. I, I think social networks, whether it's LinkedIn, MySpace, they're all very powerful. They're changing the way you and I communicate. They connected you and I in some way to, to our relationship today. They are very, very powerful to get tremendous amount of information quickly. A couple things. One is they can be the ultimate crutch for people that are networking to make a career change. Because you can literally get mesmerized by sitting in front of a computer trying to network with people that you don't know. So two things happen. One is you can use social networks as a research tool or try to get job interviews. Here's my suggestion and how I use social networks is if I were looking for a job, I would not put I'm looking for a job. My emphasis would be, I'm going to do the research already and pick the industries that I want to learn about and then go out and try to find subject experts to have them share with me what they know about their industry and share their expertise. And then I'll do the research to find out and try to get job interviews. Because the challenge is, you and I both know, if we get together, what do people like to talk about? They like to talk about what I know. Let me tell you how much I know. But if I ask you, tell me how you can help me, I'm not going to get the same response. So the, the, the normative question is better off saying, tell me what you know. Share with me your knowledge, oh Yoda. <laughs> and people will give you all kinds of information. And what happens? You make your notes. Now you have that competitive advantage to go into that industry and tweak your resume, tweak your vocabulary, make the right kind of introductions, say the right things, and as a result, you'll get better interviews because you're not going to the social network events. You'll save that for later, and you'll do your research and make calls specifically into that industry. So you've learned more from that social network than you have uh, interviews. What you also can do is share your expertise through the social networks. How do people get publicized? Well, you can post articles, write articles, and and, and do interviews or become a subject expert in your field and then post those publications through your social networks. And what, now what happens? You look like the subject matter expert out there. People remember your name. They see the byline, authored by, so forth. Now you become a leader in your field and people will remember you when they're looking either for jobs or promotions or a public speaker. But you create, you're helping create value for that customer as opposed to trying to, hey, I need a job, you know, here I am. 
so that, that's a big way that people can change you know, how they use social, how, how they use the network. Well, you have to have a resume. And uh, if you could pick three impactful elements in a resume, what are they and why? Well, re resume is, uh, we could spend three hours talking about it, but they would, uh, uh, it would bore people, to <laughs> bore people to tears because resumes are so personal that what, what I suggest to you on a resume might be in total disagreement with what someone else has told you to. But I, th I think having, having been in sales and management search for 24 years, I think there's three things that are important. One is you have to have an objective, you have to speak the language of the industry, and you have to show successes. And that sometimes is generational changes because people that are a little bit older, baby boomers and so forth, their style of writing is very different than a new person, than a, a generation X or Y. But first of all, objectives. Make sure that your resume states what you want to do. Now people have a problem with that because <coughs> if I state, if I say I want a certain position, people don't want to be pigeonholed. What if there's another position close enough? I want to, I want to be considered for that. The challenge is people are distracted. So if you, put an, if you don't put an objective, people don't know how to read the resume with purpose. So what does that mean? It means maybe you have three different resumes that address three different concepts. But having an objective to give the reader purpose is really important. Seeking an opportunity in sales management. Seeking a uh, f uh, faculty opportunity in higher ed, whatever the case may be. So objective number one. Number two is making sure that you show successes with companies and industries in your marketplace. So I call it coincidental contact if you want to use a sports thing, is the more you can talk about specific companies that you've worked with, projects you've worked on, if you can give them a name, a face, a picture, if Starbucks, Northwestern, Motorola, General Electric, Dow Corning, whatever it is, the more picture you can give to that, it gives the reader a chance to say, oh, They've done work with Walmart, Northwestern. We'd like to work with them. Or they can relate to that story as opposed to just giving facts and figures on what you did. Mm -hmm. So that's real important. And the last thing is, is goes back to speaking the language. Make sure your resume has the right kind of verbiage that that industry uses. So if we use, for example, if you're, let's use two dramatic differences, industrial and healthcare. If you're in industrial leadership and you're tr you want to get into healthcare for whatever reason, what are some of the terms that are used in healthcare? Well, healthcare uses words like protocol, diagnosis, um, therapy, uh, FDA testing, safety, statistics, things FDA, things like that. If you can pepper your resume with those kind of verbs, take your industry language and replace it, now they will read the resume and say, wow, they're closer to my industry than I thought. Maybe we should consider them. Too many people have one resume size that fits all. They use the language that they know. And the person reads this and says, this is, it might as well be Italian, and I don't speak Italian. So they bypass it. So those are, those are my three things Good that points. are very critical, I think. Russ, you mentioned networking. Is there a productive way to network to secure job leads these days? Boy, use the word networking and all kinds of bells and whistles goes off in <laughs> people's heads in terms of what's networking, what's not. And, and I, I think a couple things that are real important. One is people's definition of networking sometimes is, is very liberal. For, and what we're talking about today is how can you go out and do career change and network? One of the things that I encourage people to do, whether it's people watching this video or you or I, when we network, We've got to talk to people. I, I, talk, I use the phrase, talk to the checkbook. In essence, talk to the person that can make the decision for you either to get the job or has the authority or power to get you into the right person. So for example, many people overdose on networking. They go to events that the church function, uh, chamber of commerce, rotary, women's league, men's league, men's club, and they go there and meet with other people that, to talk about changing jobs. Socially, it's great because you get good feedback, people feel good, you get charged up, you have a, a bagel and a nice coffee, or it's a cocktail hour. 
But did you really get anything done? Did you learn anything more about how to get into an industry? Chances are you didn't. So what happens is, is I encourage people, think of that time. How much time are you using when you quote network, if we're talking about network events? If you're going to use two hours to drive, to drink, to take a few notes, shake a few hands, maybe it's two, two and a half hours total. Could you have used that time to either be on the phone or a computer to call people in your industry, tweak your resume, make contacts directly, uh, maybe go and do an online research uh, of some competitive companies that you're going after? Use that time judiciously as opposed to going out and, quote, networking. Because many times people want to tell their story. They don't want to hear yours. If I'm out of work today and I've got a family, I could really care less about your world when I have creditors at my door. I'm, I'm using salary, home equity money. I've got a lot of pressure on me. And for as much as I would love to be benevolent and help you, I'm really focusing internally on me. You know. Um, uh, lastly, when you talk about networking, it goes back to the resume writing. If you network, be very specific in your networking about what you're looking to do. It goes back to the objective. If you're at a networking function and you're talking to 15 people, and people say, so, Russ, what would you like to do? And I give them, well, I can do this, 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 and this. People go, oh, that's nice, and they, <laughs> and they leave. They don't remember what I said. But if I use one phrase, I would love to train purple elephants in Cleveland. People go, wow, that's, I, I'll keep my eyes open if I, if I hear of anybody. But see, the point is, is that you're going to remember that phrase, purple elephants in Cleveland. People aren't going to remember five or six different things you told them. The challenge is people don't want to be pigeonholed, but you can't afford to extrapolate like that. You have to be specific when you're networking. I think that's really important. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Russ, that's been really helpful. Thanks so much for stopping in and talking to us. Um, we've been talking to Russ Riendo of the East Wing Search Group in Barrington about career change in the, today's tough economy. Thanks for Thanks having me. Thanks much.